Thank you. This one? Thank you, Dennis. I'm Patricia Asadis, and the director of the Faculty Center in Teaching Learning Technology, and we're ready to get started. We have a wonderful lineup of faculty at Stony Brook who will be presenting about their programs, their online programs, online courses, things that they have put a lot of dedication and a lot of hard work into. Um, for some of us, online learning may be new, and for others, especially those who will be presenting this morning, They've been doing it for a long time and they've been practicing and perfecting their craft. So they have a lot of experience and a lot of energy to share with you today. Our first presenter is Carrie Hollander. And Carrie is, I get her title correct here, she is the Director of Grants, Program Outcomes in Academic Informatics in the School of Nursing. And she'll tell you more about the programs that they have running. She is directly responsible for the school's learning management system, facilitating innovation, and training faculty in online learning and course design. She also chairs the University Senate Educational Services Committee and was a very active member in the Provost MOOCs task force. So thank you, Carrie. Thank you. So of course, if this were online, you wouldn't see the pass off of the mics because we would have cut that right out. Good morning. How are you this morning? Thank you for inviting me. Uh, my name is, as Patricia said, is Carrie Hollander. I'm from the School of Nursing. I am not faculty. I am part of the technical support team. Uh, I direct the technical support team at the School of Nursing, but I do have faculty here uh, with us today um, that will help to represent School of Nursing at uh, the e-poster session. So, online learning, okay, it's learning. What is it? It's learning anytime, anywhere. And if we didn't learn anything from last year, we certainly learned the fact that it's even when it snows. Our online students don't have a snow day. Okay? The best that they get is if their computer locks up, if it freezes, they can go get a coffee break while the computer reboots. So that's the extent of a snow day for an online learner. And what I'm hearing actually is in some of the, um, the local schools and the school districts and the high schools, that they're actually looking to reduce the number of snow days knowing that they could possibly, those that are um, engaged in any kind of online learning for their students, that they could then switch to an online mode or a set of online lectures to supplement that day's learning. Um, so very interesting. That's the extent of our snow day there. So the School of Nursing has for almost 20 years been employing distance education to meet the challenging needs of the nursing workforce. Nursing is the world's largest workforce, some 15 million nurses around the world. In the U.S., nursing is the largest healthcare profession, with 3.1 million RNs nationwide. This is the nursing workforce, and these are the students we have and we continue to serve by employing distance education to meet their challenging and ever-changing needs. So how do we do that? Well, we have to provide education that addresses rural and underserved areas. In 1994, the School of Nursing piloted its first DE program, offering a master's and postmaster's degree in nursing midwifery. This was our school's direct response to the nursing workforce's need to produce certified nurse midwives that could provide low cost obstetric care in rural and underserved areas. In order to meet the needs, we also need to provide education that is accessible and flexible. Nurses, if you are one or have ever been married to one, you know that the majority of the full-time workers work in shifts. They are typically employed in areas in full-time careers with full-time family responsibilities, which place constraints on their educational experiences and necessitate greater flexibility in scheduling. A traditional program, even one that offers evening classes, 
is not adequate to suit their needs. Hence, you need the flexibility of a DE program to solve this problem. We also provide education that supports individual learning styles. Nurses, although they wear uniforms, like any other student, don't have a uniform learning style. DE removes some of the challenges and barriers to higher education faced by students in a traditional on-site program. Students that may, need, may not feel comfortable speaking out in class have an opportunity to digest the material and think it over and over and over again before they're really comfortable to participate and response, um, give a response that they feel is well thought out. We also need to provide education that recognizes a Bachelor of Science as the minimum educational requirement. In 2000, the American Association of Colleges of Nursing, the AACN, recognized the Bachelor of Science degree in nursing as the minimum education requirement for professional nursing practice. And I quote from them, they stated back then, rapidly expanding clinical knowledge and complexity in healthcare mandate that professional nurses possess educational preparation commensurate with the diversified responsibilities required of them. In preparation for this, in 1999, the School of Nursing launched its first distance education undergraduate program. It's our RNDP program. So we take registered nurses that come to our program, many with an associate's degree, and then have them leave with a bachelor's degree. And they are now in, in the workforce where they are more likely to be employed than a nurse that has an associate's degree. We're seeing that more and more hospitals are almost requiring it uh, as opposed to just preferring it. We also need to provide education that recognizes the DNP as an entry to advanced practice. In 2004, again, the AACN published a position statement advocating that by 2015, two years from now, entry into advanced practice will change from the master's degree to the doctorate of nursing practice, DNP, and that this degree would be recognized as one of the terminal degrees for nursing. The School of Nursing is now up to their fifth class of DNP students. Our mission, to provide accessible, high quality undergraduate graduate education to diverse student populations for the development of nurse leaders at all entrances of practice. So with the workforce need and our mission, we have really no choice but to, 19 years ago, begin to implement a DE, or distance education program. Again, it started with a pilot in the department of midwifery. What do we offer? Full and part-time, many of our students are part-time, uh, educational programs in preparation for professional nursing practice at the basic and advanced levels. So our Bachelor of Science, which is our RNDP program, our Master of Science, which covers many different specialty areas, uh, including midwifery, adult health, women's health, psychiatric mental health, neonatal nurse practitioners, pediatric nurse practitioners, uh, and now the Master's in Nursing Education, and a Doctorate of Practice program. The timeline, again, 1994, Midwifery piloted an online program. It was uh, grant funded, so initially we did get grant funding. Um, the person who spearheaded this and received these grants was the PI on the grant, was Dr. Judith Treisman. She was actually faculty in the School of Nursing at the time. We had much success. Students clearly, the workforce clearly needed this education. Uh, and we began to offer then an expanding to our family, neonatal, adult, psychiatric, mental health, pediatric, over the next few years. The RNDP program came into play. We currently have, with all of our programs, an enrollment of 1,060. That's what it was, at least when I left the office yesterday. Uh, and 240 of them are in the RNDP program. Again, our doctorate program introduced in 2008. And nursing and education in January of this year, 2003, was launched. We are in the process, of, uh, it's, in, it's pending around right now, uh, state ed approval, and that's our nursing leadership program. So I'm not allowed to talk about that one, so if we could just keep that in the room, that would be good. Student demographics, as I said, 1,060. We have students both nationally and internationally. Uh, we have reached students that are in Eritrea, Africa, Israel, Italy, Canada, Saudi Arabia. The majority of our students, however, are physically here on Long Island, which we find very interesting. Uh, and again, because it's the other reasons, not such a distance, uh, that they require this distance education for the other things that we talked about. How does it work? We now have a blended executive cohort model. 
Initially, when we piloted with the midwifery program, the students, the entire curriculum was delivered online. The students came in for a few days. It was about a three-day orientation where they met the faculty. They had an opportunity to work with the technical support team where we showed them how to use the application. Uh, at that time, you'd sit in a class and they didn't really even know what a mouse was and how to move the mouse. Uh, the average age, I should say, of our student is late 30s, early 40s. <laughs> Uh, so there are people who aren't, they didn't necessarily grow up with all the technology that our children are growing up with, so their comfort level was very different. They would then come for graduation at the end. Uh, they would do their clinical in their local areas, and we then had faculty that were considered regional faculty that would help them to mentor the students along with preceptors uh, in their clinical exercises. We now have this more blended program. So our students do come for a few days, usually two or three days, for an on-site orientation. Again, they meet the faculty, they get familiar with the curriculum, they understand what the expectations are, uh, and we teach them how to use our custom-tailored learning management system. But they also then come back scheduled uh, on-site versions throughout the year, and they know what they are ahead of time. So these students, again, nurses, which need to plan months in advance, Right from the beginning, when they apply, they know exactly what the requirement is going to be for the on-site orientation, as well as for these scheduled on-site immersions. During those immersions, the faculty get to have more face time with the students. The students get to meet up with each other, although they do an amazing job of collaborating online. Sometimes it's nice to have those faces again and the comfort level of working as a cohort. Um, we do also have the opportunity to evaluate uh, clinical skills at that time. That also is done. Uh, Throughout the year, the four, usually with each program, there are about four clinical courses, and there's preceptors um, that are local to those students that get selected by the faculty and the student uh, to precept them and teach them then all the different clinical uh, techniques that they need to know. It's all tracked using something called the Typhon system. So the faculty have a great way of seeing and making sure that the student does get a diversified set of clinical skills, that they meet all the requirements for that particular course, um, and that they are evaluated properly. The curriculum, however, is delivered via a custom learning management system. The overall design and structure, it's top down, and this is what's made it work for the School of Nursing. It's an enterprise solution as opposed to a grassroots faculty centric solution. So the difference is, although we have faculty that are amazing and faculty love to uh, bring their ideas to distance education and they are very much uh, the early adopters. It's also been top down. So the dean in the School of Nursing is the one who supports the online learning program and all of our programs. Uh, so she is the one who then determines exactly how many courses and what curriculum we need to have developed in order to satisfy the needs of the nursing workforce. We have expert faculty. They're expert in their clinical areas, so they know how to precept and, and find preceptors for students that are going to give the students that clinical experience. We have support of leadership, as I said, the dean, the associate deans, the assistant deans in the School of, the School of Nursing, all actively running online courses, all actively understanding what the faculty are up against when they do teach these online courses. And we have a dedicated School of Nursing technical support team. We're a team of four. Um, we report directly to the associate dean who reports to our dean in the School of Nursing. And we are responsible for making sure that for both faculty and for students, the online experience is what it needs to be. And we're doing nothing but servicing and supplementing that experience. We do work with this side of campus, um, which has been nice over the last two years. We brought in a lot of um, technology that's been developed over here on this side of campus, such as the SV Capture, the Echo 360 system. So faculty on our side of campus will record some key lectures that are happening. If they bring in a guest speaker, they may record that and make that available not only for the on-site, but also for the online students. So classroom lectures may be recorded, as well as there's times where faculty, when they're working with students online, that they realize that there's a deficit. Uh, in this case, Dr. Eckert uh, had worked with a group of students, and they really needed some additional information and help. Uh, with some of the statistical analysis and quantitative data that they were working with. <laughs> so she did that um, by creating a set of remediations, and she went ahead and created these at her desk and made them available uh, to both the online and on-site students that were working through here. And now this is available, so it's a reusable uh, curriculum that can be used over and over again. It is nursing, so I apologize for the topic, um, but clinical uh, procedures are also reported. 
Uh, in this case, uh, Dr. Vicki Rohana had recorded some a clinical procedure uh, that she had done that the students really needed to see. Um, her slides, her PowerPoint, showed exactly what was going on underneath the microscope or what they would expect to see and what it meant. Um, but she then was able to demonstrate with her hands. And we took the camera and we really <coughs> focused it just on the microscope and what she was doing as opposed to what she was saying. A tailor-made custom learning management system. Uh, School of Nursing back in 1994 uh, didn't have available products like Blackboard or Angel or Sakai or Moodle. Um, so instead, we had to develop our own learning management system. Uh, this, this program supports both the on-site and distance programs, the majority of which are distance programs in the School of Nursing. It's custom written learning management system. It's designed by the nursing faculty. So the nursing faculty literally sit down and say, gee, for exams, we needed to do this, this, and this. And now we need to make it do it so that our students then can be better prepared for their boards or certification exams. Um, it's actually written and developed by the technical support team in the School of Nursing, and it's really tailor-made to meet the needs of our nursing students. Students at any time when they come into our learning management system have the ability not only to see the current courses that are running, but also the courses that they've taken from past semesters. Very important because we talk about the student life cycle, uh, and the student comes in, and they're coming in more than just for the degree, they're also coming in because they need to be certified in their field so that they then can go ahead and practice and do the things that they need to do. So part of this also, in addition to getting a degree, is preparing them for these licensures, certifications, and boards. So they're able to look at every piece of curriculum that they've seen from the beginning of their program, not only to study for the next exam, but really to go and study for this sort of culminating exams that they may need to be taking. And they do that not only as an undergraduate, but now they come back as maybe a graduate student, continue to do online learning, and they can see all of the work that they had submitted to their faculty without them having to organize, it's all organized within our system, right through their portal, uh, of everything that they've done as an undergrad, because sometimes that information needs to build on what they're learning now. And even when they become then possibly a DDP student, they then can continue to see what they had done as an undergrad, and a graduate student, and so on. We do have an interesting path. We quite often have a student that is an undergrad, comes with a master's, completes their DNP, ends up being adjunct faculty, and then faculty on the school of nursing staff. The good news and how I'd like to end is that US News and World Report recently ran uh, their 2013 Best Online Graduate Nursing Programs. There were over 300 nursing programs that they looked at. Of those, 101 met the criteria for being graduate online full nursing programs, and the School of Nursing ranked number eight. So if I